bitch in my veins Hustle till I lay in this grave The world stay the same Constantly got me looking over my shoulder Cause ever these motherfuckers Only motive is to make me go under So all this brain and visions of pictures of pain Scribbled away No rhyme except for the bonus liquor blowing loud Sketching images What I've been living since The color faded away and left me with Nothing but a dream Yeah This is for the So what's up, what's up, y'all? Thanks for coming back and chit-chatting with Jizzle. The man I have next to me today is definitely not a stranger to the term hip-hop entrepreneur. In the last couple years, he's been a part of a group called Too Insane. He's also the founder and CEO of Urban Guerrilla Promotions, which has brought plenty of acts to the states like Paul Wall, Lil White, uh, you know, Scarecrow, Shy town legends like The Wreck. So, you know, definitely making noise in the state, man, and, and all across. Now, without further ado, Jay Peasy, what's good, brother? What's up, Jizzo? How you feeling, man? Chilling. We're here, we're in the spot, man. Shout out to P-Dog in the house, and uh, you know, we're definitely on location today, man. Now, um, I like to start off all the interviews with talking about, you know, so the people that are listening get to actually know you. Right. So, what are some of your, what are some of your earliest inspirations in music, you know, that made you say, like, I'm going to do this? Um, it's kind of weird because uh, it wasn't like, I'm going to do this. I've always been with doing music, like in junior high. I actually was in choir, ain't going to lie. I sang okay. a little sub so. <laughs> right. Um I also was in the band, so it ain't a nerd to be in a band. So, you know what I'm saying? It introduced me to music. I learned about reading music and all that stuff. So I know how to play the trumpet and the drum still a little bit. So it wasn't starting me, it kind of just found me because I found out that I like doing music and then over time, you know, band, choir, then I left, I started writing a lot and then once uh, I had talked to some people into a high school that I went to after I moved, they, they were like, hey, come over to the studio, it was actually 708 and Oso. They're like laid on this hook because they knew that I could sing. Can't really do that anymore because I smoke way too much loud for all that. <laughs> um, so they invited me over, said, "Hey, do this hook." I laid a hook down for him. After that, I kind of realized that I was addicted to it, and um, I realized that it's it it pushes me and challenges me to express myself and make me think. But it's also something I can do productive with my time, as opposed to being on the street when I was a kid getting into trouble, which I did for a while. Mm -hmm. But then when I started really focusing into doing music and using my brain to sit down and write lyrics and open myself up to the world, um, it kind of just took you off from there. So it wasn't starting, it just kind of found me, man. I ran with it. And that's good. And I think music is a positive note, especially in the neighborhoods when it takes kids that don't have an option and it gives them something to, to be doing instead of being on the streets. And, and you know, here's an example of that. like you know, uh, took it as an art and definitely built with it. Now, how old were you when you started making music? Um, I was actually a sophomore in high school when I recorded my first track. And then in band, I actually started, I was introduced to music probably in sixth grade, so. Okay, that's what's up. So you've been doing it for a while. Now, let's go ahead and just get right into it now. Tell me what's going on with you as an artist right now. As an artist, I kind of took some time off so I could work more on EG promotions and focus on getting the brand out there, marketing and meeting new people. So um, we actually took a bunch of old tracks as two and saying there was a bunch of, there was five people in it one time and as any group you're going to have differences and can't yeah. fix them all. So we ended up splitting ways. Um, I'm actually the only one left that was one of the original members. Shout out to Mikey K for five, found the founder of Two Insane. Shout out to Mikey K, the founder of Two Insane. Shout out to Mikey K. So um, I kind of took it over from there and kind of put it on the back burner. And what we did is we released a mixtape last year where we chopped up and cut up a bunch of old music because the fans were asking for music on a disc, so I had to give mm -hmm. it to them somehow. So I took a bunch of joints that I was on. Uh, my DJ Bobby Blaze and we kind of mix it up, threw in some EDM and released the Medicine Cabinet mixtape which is like a play on everything but the kitchen sink. We kind of did everything from just hooks from certain tracks that I did to full on verses and then some cuts that he did with it. And then uh, 
we took it over to a studio in South Bend to one of our guys and he laced it up with some scratches, man. I mean, that's uh, what we did there. Now we're actually working on the album, trying to release it sometime this winter. We were aiming for fall, but there's a lot going on in fall in terms of big shows and I don't want us trying to market something and trying to fight against the big promotion that's going to be out there with other things going on. And that's going to be called My Asylum, so keep a, keep a lookout for that. Yeah, shout out to My Asylum. Stay uh, stay tuned in with the links when I hit you uh, on the video for the JPZ links. Stay tuned with all his new albums coming up and, and all of the stuff that he's dropped. Please support Chicago artists. Uh, now, what I also want to talk about is um, if the artist, anybody that's listening to uh, this interview right now, where can they find some of the links to your music or get with you? Um, you could actually Google Too Insane, it's actually two, the number two, N-S-A-N-E, -E. and you can also go to UGOfficial.com, uh, Urban Grill's official website, and find out stuff on myself as well as everybody else who's a part of UG. Okay, that's what's up. Now, I wanted to, the, the main part of the interview is, is what I'm, what I wanted to showcase what you're doing is that you're an artist and aside from that you got Urban Gorilla Promotions and you've been doing some heavy things in the state and I've been seeing, you know, I'm definitely just seeing all the posts and everything going on in the shows. Now, let's talk about Ur Urban Gorilla Promotions. How did you start it? Uh, it it's actually a funny story. Um, like most people do when they throw shows as an artist, they tack their name down to it and say, so-and-so it presents, and then it's headlined by so-and-so. So I wanted to think outside of the box in a way in which we could promote ourselves but not seem self-indulgent and still network with people because at the end of the day it wasn't just about us it was about growing our network and, and creating the movement which we've been able to do so I sat down one day and was thinking about all the times I've sat and watched promoters run shows and things like that and it came to my mind that I could do this too because I'm OCD and uh, business is just in my blood from my family and I got an opportunity to throw a show at Bobby McGee's with uh, in Trisnet, he actually has Underground Hustlers, the uh, mixtape that goes out mm -hmm. to the underground all over the place, all over the country, it's well known. Brought him out for my first show. The owner realized that I had some potential and that I was willing to really do the work where he said most promoters go in. You know, after they book a show, sit down, party, they no longer care about what's actually going on in the show. You'll actually, at our events, see me running all over the place and handling management, doing some delegating. You know, I got a great team behind me that, that's always there if I need them. If they see me sweating or something's really going on that I might seem irritated about, they'll step in and say, hey, let me help you out. So it, it's, it's been really cool, man. Um, to be able to do what we do after seeing how many times that I've been screwed over by promoters that we've been able to develop a way that is um, an incentive to artists because at the end of the day they're not just performing and lining somebody's pockets we actually find ways to get you paid based on your numbers and things like that so where we could just stuff that pocket we don't believe in doing that because we are in your shoes at the end of the day we just our business also. Now we were talking a second ago about some of the artists that were in the UG camp and you mentioned P Dog and we happen to be in the house with P Dog so I want to go ahead and bring this artist to the stage. I'm with you. Let's get it. Part of part of UG. P Dog, what's going on? What up, Jizzo? What's going what's on? Coming, on brother? Yeah, I know. Have, a have a seat, man. Thanks for chit chatting with Jizzo today. Yeah. You know what I'm uh, saying? We were in the house. I don't know, yeah. This man has been definitely putting in work before I ever met him. I've already seen his grind and his hustle through YouTube and people sharing his videos. So it's, uh, it's an honor to be uh, here chit-chatting with you, bro. Appreciate you. Now, um, they were mentioning a couple things. Uh, Jay was mentioning a couple things that was going on. Let's talk about you as an artist and the ventures that you have going on at the moment. Man, I mean, as far as UG, man, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, I could go on top of what Jay was saying the whole all night if I want to, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as me as an artist, man, uh, you know, uh, I mean, what basically developed me, man, is I got stuck in a, in between a rock and a hard place type of situation. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had to do for my own, man. And uh, during that own venture, when I had to break off from the people I was working with, um, I met uh, Jay, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when I was going through the tough times that I was going through. and. Uh, you know, just basically an orphan in the hip hop game, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know, looking for somewhere to be, you know, somewhere to get put on and, uh, you know, couldn't get a decent show at the time and everything was rough and, uh, 
you know, he opened up the door for me like, hey, I got this thing going on. And uh, at, this, at the time, it was still in the growing stages, you know. Yeah. And this ain't really that long ago. I mean, what we're looking like two years ago, Jay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's Something kind of blur. Like that. Right, you know, about two years ago. Uh, and that's what success is, is a blur sometimes because you're just moving through it and, and then I can see right. everything happening with the UG camp. And then, uh, yeah, with all that, uh, you know, I met them and, uh, you know, they were a great group of guys at the moment. They weren't so deep. Uh, there was only like three of them at the time, you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, I met Hayes. I didn't know about her for a while. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shout out to Hayes, man. Uh, what up? You know, and, uh, you know, and Beast, I've known Beast from Mission 16. Uh, you know, he used to do uh, showcases uh, with some guy named uh, Noe back in the day. Yeah, you know? shout out to Noe, man. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. I know, see, that's what networking will do to you. My bad to cut you off. Right, man. no, no I, doubt, I, man. I met Noe, you know where they were doing those shows? They were doing shows in Franklin Park with who right. <laughs> my homie Goofy man, and they were doing it. Yeah, yeah shout, I used shout to go out, to out there, man. I was uh, using CDs at the time, man, with, yeah. uh, with the recent crew that I had uh, broke off from, man. So I was like, you know, it still had their tags in it and everything. And I was yeah. like, man, I was desperate, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I had to start somewhere, man. Uh, you know, I, you know, by the grace of God, man, I was able to start my own uh, record label, man. Uh, copyrights and everything, you know, do shit the right way, you know. What's the name of that record uh, label, bro? Loyalty Records, man, all day, Stackhouse Studios, man. Uh, we're sitting here right now, you know, it's not much, but you start somewhere, man. I started in the garage, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what? We all have our stars. Now, tell tell the viewers where they can get in contact with you, your studio, and what you're doing in your website. Well, man, I mean, mainly you can get a hold of me on Facebook, man. Uh, Facebook.com slash Loyalty Records ENT. Uh, yeah. UGOfficial.com, you know what I'm saying? P Dog artist name, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you can find me under uh, Camp Ozone if you Google Ozone Vodka, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you'll see a bunch of pictures, links, and a link you to all that as well. Uh, you know, there's just, uh, you know, so many ways you can get a hold of me. Business cards, catch me at a show, you know. Come to Chicago, man. You find me all you want, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we out here, you know, anybody watching this, I'm sure, you know, you probably know you as well. And, uh, mm. you know, shout out, man. I love it, you know, just trying to network, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, shout out to Jizzo for coming through, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Probably, and appreciate that, man. And I and appreciate for you opening uh, the studio, you know, to the show and everything. And it was a good thing to come from, you know, up north down south and just be able to just network and, and, and just, you know, just really get get everything moving. And so that's the mission, definitely. Now, another thing that we, were, that we were talking about as far as UG promotions is all the artists that you have brought to this state. Can we talk about some of the artists that you've brought into Illinois and, and we've had the pleasure to watch? Oh, absolutely. But let me first say that a lot of what we do, some of it, 75% is normally a UG event, then 25%. We actually team up with friends that we've met along the way who've shown that they're willing to take this thing to the next level and take it serious. So some of the acts that we've brought in have also been with the help of Always Granite Entertainment and Slum House, as well as the old previous owner of Bobby McGee's. He was an investor in a lot of shows and willing to support the scene and what we do. And out of that, we've worked with Lazy Bone, Crooked Eye, uh, Psalm One of Rhyme Slayers recently. Nice. Um, Paul Wall, Lil White. Lil White is a real good friend of ours. If he's in Chicago, you know, we got nothing but love for the guy. He, make sure you check him out. Even though he's an old school cat, he's still rocking that mic and treating these youngins. Um, who else have we worked with? Man, uh, a Wu-Tang member. Who's that Wu-Tang member? Capadonna. Capadonna. We did Capadonna. Mm -hmm. that, was le Capadonna. that was legit. That was the craziest thing I could, I could think we would ever do was meet somebody from Wu-Tang. We did. Nice. And, the, and the cool thing about these artists, also rec from uh, Recognize of Strange Music from Mayday, we worked with them. And the cool thing about that is that when we've been able to bring these people out, they just don't come out, perform, and dip, or just show face for a quick second. Um, we've been lucky enough to have create an environment that's so comfortable for those touring artists that they actually sit around and, and bullshit with everybody from artists to fans. And then that's probably one of the coolest things on top of the Wu-Tang thing that we've been able to accomplish because not a lot of times do you get the opportunity to get somebody that you idolize and support their music. And outside of that, for the complete list, check UGOfficial.com. There's so yeah. many I can't remember. I like to end all of the interviews, Jay, with, um, you know, we, are, we already know that the kids are smart enough to stay in school, but besides staying in school, what, what knowledge can you give the children? 
life's hard, man. It really is. And no matter how many times you get knocked down, you got to stand up, brush the dirt off. And at the end of the day, it's all about how you handle getting up when you're pushed down. So even when the world feels like it has nothing left for you, it sure does. It's just a matter of you figuring that out. It may take 20, 30 times of hitting the ground and brushing that dirt off, but eventually you're going to figure out why you're here and what your purpose is. You just have to believe in yourself and never give up. And that's definitely some really good advice coming from a man who has not given up and has gotten to where he's at right now with nothing but hard work. And that's what uh, Chit Chat with Jizzle is all about, bringing you hip-hop entrepreneurs and, and the way they do it and always come back to the episodes, like I say, and use this to build your foundation for people who are really doing it. And that's what's and up. check into VGOfficial.com for all of the latest info. Now, JPZ, thanks for uh, lending your time and, and, and speaking with us, man. It's been a good episode. Appreciate this has been it. another classic Jizzle interview.